Hey everyone, today's video is brought to you by Felt. Now, as I mentioned in my update video from last week, I've accepted a full-time position with a really cool company called Felt Maps. Essentially, I'm working as a social media manager and I'm primarily gonna be building up their YouTube channel. So be sure to go subscribe to their channel. I just released my first tutorial last week. I essentially recreated a World War II map, the static version, using three very cool tools instead of Felt. And in today's tutorial, I'm basically creating the same map, but the animated version, which is going to be a lot of fun. So let's get into it. One of the first things I need to do is make a list of the key visuals here, which are these airplanes. So there's five airplanes here. I'm going to start to write them out here in a list, and I'm also going to include the range in miles here. Now for these range visuals, it can be pretty complex to create these inside of GeoLayers, but it's incredibly easy inside of Felt. So if I come over here and create a new map, and I'm gonna search for London. So we're gonna map everything from London. I know it's more of somewhere here in East England, but just to make things simple, I'm gonna go straight from London. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna to go to View, Select List so that we can see our elements, and then I'm gonna go ahead and rename this World War II Aircraft Range Map. Down here, you'll see the Circle tool. I can just click once right on London and then click over here, and now we can see this little readout here. You can see the radius. And it's actually in miles, it's already in Imperial. All I need to do now is manually type in the distances here. So first we're gonna name this one. This will be the Spitfire, which was our first one. And if we go back to the Spitfire, it's 175 miles. So if you just come down here, you can type in 175, hit enter. And now if we zoom out, we can see we now have the Spitfire's range. But again, it's coming from London and not from East England, which is fine. We don't have to be that accurate. I know I'm sure it's important here because this allows our P-38 to make it to Berlin, but whatever, this is my map, I decide. I'll go ahead and add this range in here to the name as well. For the next step, I'll simply repeat this process for each individual plane, creating the range circle for each. All right, so there, now we have our very cool visual here. Now I will grab all of these items in the list, right click and then go to group, create group, and I'll rename this World War II aircraft range. Now I'll right click here and go to export GeoJSON. All right, so I'm inside of Adobe After Effects now and I've opened up the GeoLayers 3 panel, but I don't have any kind of project or composition set up. And I'm gonna click on the little add features to browser button and do import file. And now I'm gonna go grab my GeoJSON that I downloaded. And if I double click on this feature, it's gonna center that up. And now I can just click and drag and kind of frame it up how I will want the final composition to be maybe something like this I can always tweak it a little bit later and now I will create a map comp and we'll call it World War II aircraft range map comp now I'll choose my map imagery and there we go I'm gonna go over to layer styles and just grab this white line color here and we can do individual layers now I'll go down to features here and I'm gonna grab all of these five features and go ahead and draw these out and there we go, now we have our range visualizations here. Now I wanna go and recreate these cool little solid black icons, which are essentially like a top view of each airplane. To do this, I'm gonna to go to their corresponding Wikipedia pages, and pretty much each plane has a three view image. So this is the Thunderbolt. I'm gonna scroll down to the specifications on the Wikipedia page, and there's this image right here that's actually under a Creative Commons license. And if you click on more details, you can actually find the original file, which is an SVG vector file. So I'm gonna right click on this and go to Save As, and I'll go ahead and open this up inside of Adobe Illustrator. Now, quick disclaimer, I'm not an Illustrator expert, so if you see a better workflow or a better way to go about what I'm doing, please, please, please tell me in the comments section because I would really would like to know and learn some new things about Illustrator because sometimes this can be quite frustrating. So what I want with this SVG is I essentially want to create this, I wanna grab this one and create, basically make it a solid black element that I can bring inside of Adobe After Effects easily. So I'll just quickly go through here and delete what I don't need. And these are actually grouped pretty nice together. I'll delete this one, delete this. And now for this one, we have a bunch of different paths here. I'm gonna rotate it so it's pointing up and then I'll go to align and I'm just gonna center this up. 
And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab the stroke and I'm just gonna turn that off and then I'll go over to the fill and I'll set that to black. And right away, you're gonna see that we have a bit of a problem. I can't just switch all of these to fills because we have some open paths and some issues that are going on. So the best way that I've found to handle this is to simply go over here and grab the live paint bucket tool and then simply grab one of these areas and then switch it back to the live paint selection tool. And then that will allow you to grab all these groups. And now you can simply grab the color again and it's gonna fill all of those in. There we go. Now we still have all of these paths. So I wanna be able to bring it over as a vector in Adobe After Effects and then create a shape file or a shape layer from the vector. And if I do it this way and I leave all these paths, it's gonna trace all these paths. So I wanna have just an outer path here. So the quickest way I've found is to grab it, go to object and rasterize it, click okay. And then simply grab it again and go to image trace and select silhouettes. And then I'll look at the view tracing results with outlines and then go ahead and click on expand. And now what that does is you can see I have a simple path on the outer edge and now I can go to object and I can simplify this path a little bit. Go to path, simplify. Now I can go to file and just save this as an Adobe Illustrator file. Now I can grab the Illustrator file, drag it and drop it directly over here. And now if I just grab the individual layer, you see I now have this. And if I solo it, here we go, we have this airplane. If I wanna turn it into a shape layer, I simply right click on it, go to create, create shapes from vector layer, and it did that really quickly, delete that original one, and now I will rename it Thunderbolt. Now I'm gonna repeat this process for each airplane. Okay, now I have all of my airplane icons finished. Next, to keep things organized, I'm gonna simply change the label color of all of these range uh, circle shape layers. And I actually want these to be black with dashes instead of white. So to make this happen, I'll go over here and create a new layer style in the GeoLayers 3 panel. And once I have this created, I'm gonna simply swap it out with these existing ones. Now I'll quickly rough in the position, the scale, and the rotation of each plane icon on their corresponding range visuals. Now I wanna change the look of the base map as it's not looking like a proper World War II map, it's too colorful. So for this, I'm gonna to go to the effects and presets panel and grab the Lumetri color effect and drop it straight on my map comp. Under basic correction, I'm gonna turn down saturation and I'm gonna bring up the exposure and the black levels. I can also add this white solid and place it underneath the map comp and then bring down the opacity of the map comp down. This is gonna help make all of these elements on top stand out a bit more. I want these range visuals to animate on from London. So this is a bit of a problem as you'll see, actually the anchor point is uh, at the top left-hand corner of the shape. So to get around this, I'm gonna add a null label for the city of London. And then I'm going to attach all of these elements to this London null. What that's gonna allow me to do is when I scale this, it's all gonna move um, in relation to where this null is, which is London. I'll go ahead and attach all the plane icons to the null as well. Next, I'll use the text tool to quickly add a bunch of labels to the airplanes. To make sure they stick to the map, I'm gonna turn on 3D and also then parent them to the London null as well. Again, now when I scale this null, you'll see everything animates on screen, but it doesn't look very good at all. So let's say that I wanna animate each plane on individually so that I can then stagger them and just make everything look a little bit more dynamic. So the best way to do this is to actually create my own paths using the pen tool. I'll first click over London and then wherever a plane is located and now I have this path. I'll rename the layer after the plane and then duplicate and repeat for all of the other planes. And these are essentially going to be my animation paths. It's important that I first click over London and then over the plane location so that they animate in that direction. Now to make the animation happen, I'll grab all of the path layers and then go over to the GeoLayers 3 panel and click on this little plus icon and then select feature from layer. This essentially geo-references all of these paths and creates new map features for each and they're in this feature collection here. Now I don't really need these paths anymore on screen, the original ones, so I'm going to turn off the visibility and hide them. 
So to use these map features to animate the plane icons, I'll first select one plane icon as well as the corresponding path in the GeoLayers panel. Now I'll click on the pin icon and select Animate Layer Along Feature. Voila, I now have an animation. Just be aware the animation is going to start wherever your playhead is positioned um, within the timeline. So make sure you bring that playhead to the beginning. Now I can hit the U key to look at the keyframes here and I can grab these, add some easy ease, and then retime them to match the other visuals. Now to animate my remaining planes, I'll simply repeat these steps for each plane icon. I'll add some easy ease again to these, retime them again to the keyframes, and now I can stagger the layers so that they animate on from the closest to the furthest. To get an even better look, I'm going to come through here real quick and animate the scale as well. Now when you're adding a lot of elements like this and you're reattaching items to other objects and nulls, things can get a little dicey. And you want to make sure that everything is still attached and will move with the map when you decide to move it. Now what I like to do before moving my map is to save out a map view. That way if something isn't attached and falls out of position, you can always jump back to this map view and just reattach that element. So once that's finished, um, I'm going to see if everything is working well by simply changing the pitch and the bearing of my map. And right away you can see we've got some problems. And what I need to do is jump into the parameters of the London null because so many things are attached to this null. And I'm going to turn on scale and rotate with map. And that pretty much fixed everything. I also want to scale a little bit to make sure that everything is scaling correctly as this is a very important part of this visual as these are having to do with distance we want them to scale with the map. I'm almost done now it's a matter of animating my map view and retiming the plane animations until everything looks nice and in sync. This can take a lot of tweaking so just give it some time as you can see here I'm doing a little time lapse speed up of what I did here and I just tweaked with it a whole lot. Now once that's good to go, I'll add an adjustment layer and drop on my signature noisy vignette effect. And then I'm going to also add my signature map marker here and geo-reference it to London and then just resize it. All right, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This was very fun to put together. Also, putting the static map together over on my fill tutorial, I urge you to go check that out. It's very cool. And as always, if you're a map lover, be sure to check out my Monday Maps playlist where I just create all different types of map animations. If you want to get the project files for this particular tutorial, head over to my Patreon page, link in the video description. And if you want to master GeoLayers 3, check out my GeoLayers 3 masterclass. All right, see you in the next one. Special love and a big shout out to my tier 3 patrons. Thank you all so much for making this video possible. I appreciate it very much.